please the entertainment, the infotainment element of Christian I don't think that's healthy. And the principles and the methods that journalists, for example, will use who are writing entertainment or property whereby they have one source, or maybe there are no sources at all. They just pay them to just make it up, and it's only entertainment, nobody cares. These principles, which are, seem to me to be inherited in these facets of journalism, also seem to me to be creeping into the more serious forms of journalism, and that's very, very dangerous, particularly in relation to crime, where you know, you're talking about life and death issues, where people are now writing stories which are based on dubious sources or no sources. I mean, you can all see, you can see in the papers, if you read the papers down, it says a source said, or a confidential source said, you know, then, then your alarm bell should go on. And I know I'm probably going on a little bit, but I'll just give two examples, two or three quick examples in relation to this, or I think it's worthy in relation to crime journalism. We have a story published in the papers recently about um, two criminals, Tony Filoni and John Gilligan. Both are major drug dealers, I don't know if you've heard of them. Both are major drug dealers, both serving long sentences in Portuguese prison. The story went that John Gilligan and Tony Maloney were having sex together in Port Leach Prison. That was the story. Now, okay, we're going to have a laugh at it, and a lot of people did have a laugh at it. On the other. There was no corroborating evidence for it. It may or may not have been true. I suspect it wasn't true. There was definitely, as far as I'm concerned, no source for it, or no authentic or credible source for that. But hey, look, they're drug dealers, they're scumbags. Who cares? Well, you know, that's not really that's not really the right thing to do. First of all, it's not the ethical thing to do, and anybody with integrity wouldn't do that. But more to the point, the journalists that wrote it knew they didn't really need a source for it, knew there was no comeback for these people with no reputation, and also knew that, you know, hey, they weren't writing anything wrong about these two guys because hey, homosexuality is not illegal, it's okay for a guy to sleep in a bed so, so they weren't writing anything wrong. So it was a, it was a, it was a clever little deception, really. But the, but, the, but the flip side of that is that when John Gilligan and Tony Maloney heard that, they went ballistic. And they got on the phones and started bringing the lads in Dublin or wherever to say, get the guns ready, we're going to blow some heads off of this. So it puts people in a dangerous position because you are turning criminals into angry people, you're writing lies about them. And even if it's, let's put it this way, first of all, it's dangerous because you're writing lies about them and you're putting lives at risk. But, at risk. but even if that was true, it's their personal business who they sleep with. So why do you write it? Where is the news value? A story like that can do nothing, do nothing but cause, cause trouble. And journalists, or so called crime journalists who write stories like that, are putting lives at, at risk. Maybe, no, most of them, they don't know. 